Hello, I'm having a hard time writing about it, so I figured I would talk about it. I'm going to talk about spaceships. And more correctly, the uh, art of games that build spaceships. So there are a lot of games coming out where you can build spaceships. Some are in early access, some are still in pre-alpha or closed access. Um, the most popular is probably Space Engineers. These games allow you to build ships out of bricks on a grid. This is a bad way to build ships. That's really all I want to say, but I want to go ahead and talk at quite a bit of length as to why it's a bad idea and what it means uh, and why you shouldn't do it like that. So, when you're in combat, the only things that matter are your guns, your engines, your shielding units, your generators, whatever else actually has a statistical impact on the fight. The actual bricks making up your ship are just there to fill out space and maybe serve as a little bit of armor. But even as armor, they're not very good armor. You're better off with a shielding unit because a shielding unit is predictable. When you're simulating every single brick, that means that just arbitrarily things can go wrong. So, you know, if you've got a specific set of bricks and then in the end comes another brick and this brick hits this brick and it causes, causes a hole, um, it's impossible to really make that a predictable event. Because of that, combat in these games tends to be very unpredictable. Um, and a lot of people who do these sorts of, for example, if you play Space Engineer, you're less likely to get in combat in any kind of competitive sense, and you're more likely to just ram ships into each other because it looks really cool. Um, and that may be changing. They may be, they may be slowly fixing the combat system up so that it's fun to play, but you, you're still having this problem where you've got all these bricks that are primarily just for prettiness's sake and don't actually accomplish anything. There are times when brick gameplay is good, when grid gameplay like this is good. One of those is when there is topological constraints and the grid allows you to impose order onto chaos. So, for example, there might be a river running through this area and you might have to connect everything to a road. So in doing this, you can quickly see that there is going to be, you know, you want to connect things to a road, so you build something here, and then you maybe build something here, and you maybe build something here, and you impose order onto this chaotic setting. And that's the SimCity approach. You've got topological confusion, and you impose order onto it. But there is no topological constraint on building a starship. So, the uh, when you use this in building a starship, you actually end up imposing chaos onto order because the simulation of every single brick ends up making things too unpredictable. The other time bricks are good is when you're trying to control flow in a free-flowing, free-form manner. The classic example of this is a dungeon. So here's bricks in a dungeon, and your player comes in, a player comes in, they look around, and they're like, hmm, hmm, and they can do whatever they want, and they'll walk around however they like, but they're constrained inside of this space because you've built bricks around them. And then you say, well, maybe we need to put a door brick here. And they go, oh, look, a door. And they go through. So you're controlling their, uh, their movement and how they flow. And this is something that we've done on pencil and paper forever. But in something like Minecraft, it actually is very, very cool. Because when you look at Minecraft as something other than a survival game, it's all about flows. So when people build an adventure map, or a monster trap, or anything like that, they are controlling the flow. The flow of people, the flow of monsters, the flow of water, the flow of lava, the flow of, of stuff. Um, they're building stuff that controls all these flows and directs them. And because it's freeform, you can do really complicated things, like jumping puzzles. Um, and that's not something that you'd be able to do if your dungeon was made entirely up of prefab rooms. You wouldn't be able to invent new jumping puzzles. You wouldn't be able to invent new methods of combining these various flows together. But you can if you are completely freeform and you're allowed to control the flow however you'd like. Moreover, if you get a brick that does something, like a pusher brick, then you can implement that. You can put that into your mazes you can figure out how that will change the flow and you can create entirely new kinds of flow and every brick that has a new function allows you to do that exact same combination of things so each kind of brick each kind of flow they all combine and you end up with very very 
uh, arbitra as arbitrarily complex as you would like options. You can do almost anything. And, uh, and that is what Minecraft excels in. Of course, it also excels in being a nice thing to walk around in and see, you know, huge vistas and mine gold and all that stuff. But that's really not about controlling flow. That's the rest of the game. So, there's no flows in a spaceship. None that are simulated at any rate. I mean, there, there is energy and there is fuel, but you just have like a mass of it. You don't have to worry about where it goes. So this is also not a reason to use grid or brick formation. Um, there's no reason to use bricks when you're building a starship. They're just a bad option. Uh, if you're going to do freeform starship creation, it would, it would be good to do it like Kerbal, where you've got some fundamental shapes, but none of them are bricks. None of them are the same size as all of the other ones. And that allows you to create very complicated setups out of very simple parts. Like, you know, something like this. And that will allow you to create the ship you desire. And, of course, if any new parts come out, they can be slotted in. That Kerbal is getting a little bit old. Um, it's not as advanced as it might be if it was produced today. And one of the things that we're able to do now, that were, would have been difficult when Kerbal was first created, is it's very easy to deform meshes. So if we were to drag this, it would be pretty easy for us to create a version of something like Kerbal, where you could deform the pieces into whatever shapes you wanted. And that would allow you to have a lot of expressiveness, and it would also allow you to have a lot more complexity to your topology. But Kerbal does one other thing much, much better, and that is it kills ships. Now, I don't mean that every ship crashes. I mean that every ship destroys itself over the course of its mission. So you build something huge, and you launch, and then you drop off the first stage, and then you drop off the second stage, and then you drop off the third stage, and then you go into orbit, and you drop off another stage, and then you're just a lander, and you land. So whatever the mission is, every stage of the mission destroys your ship some. And this means that you go through a lot of ships. And in turn, that means you become very, very good at creating ships. And because of the incredibly wide variety of missions you can go on in Kerbal, you can keep building new ships. So in something like Space Engineer, you might build a really epic ship that you just love. But the problem is, you're done. That's it. Until this ship goes away. I know those are all my Kerbal mods because I clicked on the wrong screen. Sorry about that. Until this ship goes away, there's no uh, uh, there's no building of another ship. There's no feeling that you need to mil to build more or do more because this ship serves for whatever your purpose is. Um, and in Space Engineers, there really isn't a whole lot of purpose. So you end up building a ship, and it's an art piece, and then you're done, and then you stop. Uh, in Kerbal, you build a ship, and it destroys itself over the course of the mission. And you're like, oh, okay, that was really cool. Now let's build another ship. You see how that's different? And now, you could probably do that in a game where you built your ship out of bricks, but it would be really tedious, because you'd continually... Laying out bricks actually takes a significant amount of time, and you'd be continually destroying these very difficult-to-create things, and visually speaking, you would start to get sick of trying to sculpt them into beautiful things, because all you want is the functionality if you're going to destroy it. So you would just end up, you know, creating something that's super, super um, spidery refined, just whatever the hell works. Uh, and that, that wouldn't look very nice. Kerbal's modular approach allows you to build very large and complicated ships without spending a whole lot of time on it. Um, and it allows you to continually refine by launching and then recovering, uh, you know, re restoring to, uh, to, the, to the bay. So you get a lot of uh, iteration. That's something that's really missing from grid-based games in general. Uh, and iteration is critical if you plan to have any upper-level gameplay, because that's what lets people get their skills together. It's what lets people discover how they want to build ships and what they want to do. Yeah, so that's why bricks are bad. It's also why combat is bad. Combat is not a very good way to fire test your ships. Um, a multi-part mission is always going to be more interesting than a single part mission. So if you're just doing combat, then basically 
you have a ship that fights and then you're done and then it's proven itself or it's failed to prove itself and that's it um, it's much more interesting to have to build the ship with the future in mind and to understand that oh well I have to do X and then I still have to do Y with the same resources after that so I had better build a ship that has the capability to move from X to Y with still having resources left over and these sort of challenges, these are construction challenges, and these are construction challenges that will really, really challenge the player and make them really enjoy themselves. Now, there is a place for strictly fun builds. There is a place for giant space stations that do nothing but look cool, um, or they do something, but it's not really, you know, it's not really a series of challenges as such. There's definitely a lot of space for playing around. But fundamentally, that has to be supported by some kind of iterative gameplay. And that means building ships out of bricks is not so great, and using combat is not so great. Anyhow, I'm trying to think of a new kind of mission system and building system. That's why I went on this rant. Hope I didn't bore you too much.